Hey everyone, it's Mike Reinold from MikeReinold.com and Champion PT and Performance up in Boston. Um, I wanted to show a quick video um, of how lumbo-pelvic alignment can really impact two things. Um, this is a conversation I have with a lot of clients that are in for various things and with the students a lot that we talk about. So I thought I'd kind of show it in, in kind of some drawings and share what kind of the drawings that I do for some of my clientele so they can kind of see what I'm, what I'm talking about sometimes. Um, so we're going to really again talk about how lumbo-pelvic alignment like in pretty much the sagittal two-dimensional plane. So we'll just say like anterior posterior pelvic tilt, how that has an influence on hamstring length and how that has an influence on the spine. So with the normal posture, and I don't know what the heck that means to be honest, I don't know what normal posture is, but most people have a, a little bit of an anterior pelvic tilt. I'd say that's fairly normal. Um, it's when people have like a really big anterior pelvic tilt or some people are even posteriorly pelvic tilted that we kind of see some differences. But again, in the, in the normal posture, we'll say there's a mild anterior pelvic tilt. That's kind of what they look like with their kind of legs in this position. Their spine has a, a normal kind of little lordosis and kyphosis. You can see that that's, that's kind of our normal posture. But when that changes and we have an excessive anterior pelvic tilt, watch what happens a little bit here. And I'll kind of make that kind of alignment a little different. In order to not be completely bent forward and having your head up in this position, what happens is, is you increase your, your spinal curves. So you increase your lordosis, which then subsequently increases your kyphosis, and this guy doesn't have a neck, sorry, I drew that wrong, but you can see their head in this position has a little bit more of a curve, okay? So that's just spine. If somebody has more of a kind of a posterior pelvic tilt position and they're kind of more kind of upright, what's gonna happen is they're gonna have really kind of flat motions in here. So with lumbopelvic kind of fairly normal, we'll say, with a little bit of an anterior pelvic tilt, you see a good little lordosis and, and, and kyphosis of the thoracic spine, but a, a pretty much normal one. What you have with an increased anterior pelvic tilt is you have an even bigger curve in that position. That often results in that forward head posture, kind of that hyperextension of, of your head in this, this position, okay? When you have more of a posteriorly pelvic tilted or even kind of a flat upright pelvis, you can see that flattens out the spine a little bit. So that's how it kind of like influences the curves a little bit. But one thing we often talk about is what happens to the hamstrings. So let's just guess and pretend the hamstrings kind of attach here. You have this for a hamstring, you have this for a hamstring, and you have this for a hamstring. You can see a big difference in the size of these hamstrings, right? You can have a medium hamstring, a long hamstring, and a short hamstring just based on the position of the pelvis, okay? So hopefully that's kind of showing up where you guys can kind of see that. But what tends to happen is this person with the anterior pelvic tilt thinks they have a tight hamstring, right? Because they have a decreased straight leg raise or some sort of thing when they're trying to stretch. So if you lay them on the back and they again have this big anterior pelvic tilt, so it's in this position here, their hamstring's gonna appear tight because it's attached so far up towards the head at this position that it seems tight. Right, so it looks like it's a short hamstring because they don't have as big of a hamstring, uh, excuse me, a straight leg raise, but it's because they're, they're anteriorly pelvic tilted and then the attachment side of the hamstrings is kind of more towards the head, okay? And that's kind of what's dictated in this, this picture as well. So when you see it here, it looks like a tight hamstring. So when does this become a difference? This becomes pretty noticeable when you have an asymmetrical pelvis, which is pretty common as well with our normal postural adaptations. So maybe you're, you know, you're a PRI kind of thought process person, which is you know, pretty accurate with their normal uh, postural adaptations, but maybe like your left pelvis is a little bit more anteriorly tilted than the right. What, what you'll find then is that on that left side, it looks like their hamstring shorter than their right side. But it's because we're using a straight leg raise as a test. So it's not that it's necessarily tight, it's just that the test that we're using um, is kind of showing a little different. So that's kind of the example we kind of say when we kind of draw it here, is the hamstring appears to be to be short because your straight leg raise is less, but it's really longer because of its attachment point and it looks like a less of a straight leg raise. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Those are really two things I show about how just anterior posterior pelvic tilt will influence hamstring length and the curvature of the thoracic and, and lumbar spines and really the cervical spine too. So you kind of put that all together and you see how the kinetic chain works. So a lot of people say like, hey, wow, I worked on my core control, I worked on my, you know, just my, my glute development or whatever it may be, and even like my neck pain felt better. I feel like I'm in better posture, my head's not as forward. That makes perfect sense, right? So that's how they really play together. I just wanted to show a quick video of kind of how I draw this for clients, how we kind of teach it of how lumbopelvic position influences the spine and how it influences hamstring length.